Now, using this one-dimensional random walk process, uh, and we will take its limit to obtain what we call the Wiener process. Let's consider the symmetric one-dimensional random walk, and symmetric means here p equals one half. Uh, we have to understand what this means. P equals one half means I take a step in the positive direction with a probability of one half, and I take a step in the negative direction with with the same probability. That means it's a symmetric random walk. In the long run, you expect to see the variance grow, but you also expect to see the ex expectation stays at zero. So the average value over time, you expect it at zero, okay? But of course the variance uh, grows with time. That's why we say symmetric. If, if even uh, you shift the P value, even a fraction, uh, it will be biased, okay? If you make it 0 0.500001, after some time, it will be tending towards positive infinity, okay? And if you make it 0 0.499999, okay? Then it will be tending towards negative infinity. Um, okay, so then we will um, also modify the time index and the amount of the step. We'll make it not plus one, minus one, but we will make it plus minus h. h here is going to be an infinitesimal increase, okay? And every delta time, okay? And delta here is going to be our, uh, the, the, the width of our time slot, okay? It's not going to be one, two, three, et cetera. It's going to be delta, two delta, three delta, et cetera. Now, the, the step process is the same. It's IID. Uh, but of course, it's not plus minus one, it's plus minus h, but the probabilities are one half and the definition of the random walk is the same. And when you observe this process at time t equals n times delta, of course, since we have selected p to be one half exactly, the expected value is zero. What about the variance? Since the mean is zero, the variance equals the second moment and the second moment I can write in this way, the sum of steps from one to n multiplied by itself, but for uh, ease of derivation, I used uh, a different index here. So again, here I'm going to have n squared terms, but n of those will be square terms, d1 squared, d2 squared, d3 squared, etc. And the remainder, n times n minus one terms will be cross terms, d1, d2, d1, d3, d1, d4, etc d2, d1, d2, d3, d2, d4, d etc. okay? And that corresponds to this. And the good thing about those uh, is that since D is IID process, I can separate the expectation in this way, in, these, uh, in this term, because I and J are never the same. And here I will have the second moment of the step process. And again here, it's, uh, since the step is either plus H or minus H, its square is always plus h square. So I have n times h square. And this term here, since p is exactly one half, expected value of one step is zero, right? Expected value of di, dj, these are zero. So this term is completely zero, okay? So the variance of wn becomes n times h square. As you see, it grows with time due to n, okay? so. Looking from here, the range of values it can take varies with respect to time, okay? Now, we will take the limit of this random walk process, okay? Uh, we'll define this process, xw, as the limit of wn as delta goes to zero. So my time slots are approaching infinitesimal time instants and h is going to zero. That means my steps get again infinitesimal, infinitesimal small, but we'll keep this relationship constant. h equals square root alpha times delta. Alpha here is a scaling and shape parameter. And in some texts, uh, you will not see this. In, in Leon Garcia, you have the alpha. In K's book, you don't have the alpha. Um, some books uh, don't use it, but uh, here I have taken it to allow for the general case. So don't, don't be surprised if you do not see uh, alpha in the derivation in, in, some, uh, in some book or some website, etc. 
Okay. So when you look at uh, this random process at the limit, its expectation is also zero because the expectation of W is also zero. And the variance is N times H square, which means since um, N equals T divided by Delta uh, based on this relationship, right? N equals T over Delta. And H square is based on this relationship, alpha times Delta. And therefore, uh, the variance is alpha times T. Okay, the, the variance is again proportional with time as expected. Now, this process is called Wiener process. Okay, it's, and the namesake is Norbert Wiener, very famous and very prolific uh, mathematician. And as I said, uh, there is a, an entire subject in statistical signal processing called Wiener filtering, uh, which deals with designing optimum filters, optimum causal filters in general, um, to, to make predictions uh, or to estimate uh, values of random processes based on previous uh, values. Okay, so uh, this uh, Wiener process is extremely important, not only by itself, but also because uh, other uh, contexts it can be used on. And Norbert Wiener is a, a, a very uh, prominent figure in uh, probability theory in general. Now, Wiener process, why is it so important? It describes what we call the Brownian motion. This Brownian motion, again, it's, it's named after Scottish botanist Robert Brown. Uh, well, what does a botanist have to do with random processes? Well, Robert Brown observed the, uh, the behavior of pollens in, in water droplets, okay? So he, he was uh, investigating the, um, the, the uh, pollinization of uh, flowers, let's say. And uh, during his uh, studies, he observed the, the particles, the, uh, the pollens, uh, and how they move in, in, in water, suspended in water. So he, he came up with a mathematical uh, description of this. And the Wiener process, well, it, it perfectly describes what is called the Brownian motion the diffusion of tiny particles suspended in fluids or gases under random influence of neighboring particles. And you see, this has many applications in physics and in chemistry and the study of gases, etc. in applied mathematics, uh, like uh, the, the behavior of crowds, for instance, crowd dynamics, and also in economics and quantitative finance, like option pricing models and stock market fluctuations, very important and very lucrative study areas, uh, evolutionary biology and electrical engineering also, as I have just mentioned, it has applications in uh, statistical signal processing. Okay, and how do we mathematically describe Wiener process? Essentially, when, when delta tends to zero, n equals t divided by delta, therefore, um, in, in t time, what you observe is at, at time t, you observe uh, an infinite sum of infinitesimally small steps, okay? X of t approaches the sum of infinitely many IID random variables. Therefore, by the center limit theorem, it has a Gaussian distribution. As we have seen, its mean is zero and its variance is alpha times t. This is the distribution it has, okay? And uh, obviously, since it's, uh, it's, a, it's a variant of uh, some process, it has independent and stationary increments property. And this enables us to obtain its uh, autocorrelation function quite easily. If you write x t1, x t2, and assuming that t2 is again greater than t1, you can write x of t2 as x of t2 minus x of t1, plus x of t1. And this increment here is independent of x of t1. That's the good thing about uh, this separation. And if you expand this, it's x of t1 times the increment from t1 to t2, and then you have x of t1 square, this product here. Now, uh, since these are independent, these two, 
I can separate their expectations, x of t1, x of uh, the increment from t1 to t2. But you see, we know that the mean is 0. So this here is 0. That means this term dies out. What I just have is the second moment, which is equal to the variance because the mean is 0, which is alpha times t1. OK? It's not alpha times t2 because I have t1 here. Be careful. Therefore, to generalize it, I can write this is alpha times the minimum of T1 and T2. Uh, another property of Wiener process is it's scale invariant. That means if you scale uh, the time by beta square, and if you scale the value of the process by one over beta, what you end up with is still a Wiener process. Of course, beta is non-zero. And uh, final point about the Wiener process or the Brownian motion, we have studied here the one dimensional case, right? But it also has a two dimensional, a three dimensional, and in fact, uh, more dimensional uh, variance. You have the two dimensional Brownian motion, three dimensional Brownian motion in, in like a volume, etc.